What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Here's my question for you guys today. Have you ever ridden a coaster with like an element midway through or towards the end that took you by surprise? For me, I just took a visit to Busch Gardens Williamsburg and Verbolton and the little drop on Apollo's chariot towards the end both took me by surprise and actually got me pretty good. But can you imagine something like this on a coaster back from the 1920s? Well, today's coaster is just that, with one that is mostly forgotten and unknown by enthusiasts, but was said to have one of the most intense and airtime-filled experiences ever, even by today's standards. With a mere height of 60 feet, today's coaster didn't necessarily seem like anything special, but towards the end, there was something huge waiting. A giant drop into a massive ravine that took riders nearly 100 feet into the valley below. Now today, 100 feet may not seem like a lot, but for back then, and especially with something like buzz bars, that would have been one of the craziest, most airtime, just insane experiences you could have possibly gotten. And if you know me, I of course wanted to know more. So what is it, and where did it come from? This is the story of the Parada Springs Cyclone. The earliest amusement park on Cleveland's west side was Parada Springs Park. It was situated close to a wide gorge with a view of the Rocky River Valley, resulting in a gorgeous woodland scene fit for a lovely day out. The amusement park was distinct due to its location, but it shared one characteristic with all other parks in it that it was positioned along the streetcar lines that connected Cleveland with its suburbs. And its story is not one to be forgotten. John Gooding, a pioneering steam carousel owner, chose Parada Springs Park as the location for one of his rides in 1898 when he leased the property from the Cleveland Electric Railway Company. By 1901, he had in fact accomplished leasing the entire park, which then allowed him the freedom to follow his own ideas for improvement. On the property, he erected a home in which he stayed, and started the difficult process of developing his very own theme park. But he didn't add much. As with the addition of said carousel and a few other smaller attractions, the main draw of the park was its scenery and landscape, which proved enough to get visitors. But he wanted more, and after surveying the surrounding terrain for some time, decided to build the ultimate attraction of the modern age, a giant wooden roller coaster. According to the historical marker database, in 1927, John A. Miller, famed roller coaster designer, built an unrivaled coaster at Parada Springs Park, which took advantage of its location at the edge of Rocky River Valley. Opening June 10, 1928, the Cyclone was seen by patrons as one of the tallest and fastest coasters in northern Ohio, where riders plunged 87 feet into a ravine on a winding course, careening through the trees and around the cliff's edge. At the time, the Cyclone was in fact the fastest and highest coaster in the Cleveland region, reaching alleged speeds of 50 to 55 miles per hour. Rumors vastly exaggerated this speed though, but it was nevertheless still the tallest and fastest attraction in the Cleveland region at the time. It wasn't perfect though, and due to its size and location, the roller coaster was widely regarded as risky. Numerous riders reported to have been hurt while riding it, and so for the 1946 season, it was reprofiled. Unfortunately for the park though, a series of difficult maintenance and even a fire would bring a surprise end to the attraction as well as the park, and by 1958, everything closed, and Parada Springs, at least what was left of it, was abandoned. Interestingly enough though, pieces of track do still in fact remain from this one-of-a-kind coaster, and can be seen to this day nearly 100 years later, buried under trees and shrubbery. Something I'd certainly like to see, and I think it'd be cool to see a section restored and put in a museum. Anyways, with that said, we have now reached the end of the video, so if you did enjoy it, please feel free to like and subscribe, that helps a lot, and I'd love to hear any thoughts you have down below about it. It certainly was an interesting coaster, just unfortunate it existed so long ago. As always though, it's been a major pleasure creating new content for you guys, and I do plan to have another video out in a couple days per usual, so stay tuned for that. Until then, it's been fun, and we'll see you all there. See ya.